the goal of this uh, session is to explain uh, how push notifications are done using uh, Azure Notification Hub. I'm going to make it visual. I'm going to show you uh, what settings need to be changed in uh, Azure Portal and what are the concepts involved uh, in using a notification uh, and the concept of a namespace uh, in involving in the uh, deployment of a push notification infrastructure. A notification hub has two resources, a namespace and a hub. A hub is a single resource that contains the push notification information for both Android and iOS for one app. But a namespace can be having multiple hubs. In this case, we have a namespace which has two hubs, production and non-production. But each of the hub, either production or non-production, will contain the push notification information for one app, for both iOS and Android. So I have my uh, Azure account open here. I click on the notification hubs. And as you can see, I have two hubs here, uh, which belong to the same namespace. Uh, one is the production uh, hub and one is a non-prod hub. As you can see here, it's called non-prod here. But these two hubs belong to the same namespace. And I can click on the hub and uh, do a test, do a test send to various uh, devices. For example, uh, let me show you a quick uh, configuration here. So I'm going to non-prod here and I'm going to go to Apple. And here I have to fill in the key ID, bundle ID, team ID and token and set the mode to production uh, and uh, do a test for the push notifications. So in this case, so I have my Apple uh, developer program uh, membership details open here. So the team ID comes from there. The team ID comes from here, as you can see here. And uh, the bundle ID is the bundle ID of the app, which is unique to the app. Uh, the key ID comes from the certificate section. If you go to the Apple developer account, if you go to the certificates, there you will have a key ID. I can test my uh, push notifications using this test send button. So I click on this test send button and I can select a device which is Apple for now and I can write a tag expression. I'm going to explain you what these tags are uh, when we get into the code. Um, and I can use a tag expression here and then I can add an alert here. Uh, this is a test alert. For example, this is a test alert. And then uh, I send the, I'm, I click on the send button and this alert will be visible on your device. So I, I selected Android here in the platforms and I have this payload uh, JSON structure here. I just want to tell you that this structure uh, may not work for some Android uh, implementations. Uh, make sure you know what that structure is in advance and uh, you have to change it here. This data and then message might differ for Android it might not work, just a word of caution. Make sure you uh, check this in advance before trying this payload out. So the next one is access policies. Uh, so I am in my notification hub and I scroll down to the access policies. So I, by default, I get two access policies here. Um, the way to use this is you should always use a uh, listen uh, in your app. For example, uh, if you are implementing this in iOS, you only use the signature which has the listen permission. And when you are doing a push notification, when you are uh, requesting for push notification, then you have to use this full shared access signature, which is from your API project. So I'm going to discuss, I'm going to show uh, some code here uh, to explain how this is done and the tags. And I'm going to talk about the tags. So this is the iOS uh, app delegate. And uh, as you can see, I have a listen only connection string here. I'm not using the full access connection because it, this is a client app. This is my iOS app. I would use a full connection only in a API project. So here I have, I set some tags here, as you can see. Uh, the idea behind a tag is when you send a push notification, you can send to only a group of users using these tags. So tags filter out your push notification. For example, I can I have a tag here of for state code. I have a tag for a group ID and a tag for a user. So all these three tags are pushed on my device. For example, so if I want to send a push notification only to New Yorkers, I would use a tag uh, for that called state code, and I would say state code equals New York, and I would so the tag would be so the push notification would be only sent to those 
people who live in the new york state based on how they have registered so this is advantage of having tags a tag will give you a group or a cohort uh to which you can send notifications so if you look at this uh, code here uh all i'm doing is i'm creating this device i'm getting this device token uh which is actually uh, called when I, when this method is called by the ios operating system this is actually a notification that is called it sends in the device token and i'm uh, i'm pushing this device token to the push notification server saying that okay for this device these are my tags and uh, and then i'm just uh, uh, setting the values setting the various default standard values and also the push device token and stuff like that so the one thing to remember is when a user logs off the app when the user logs out of the app you must call device notification and register all async you must call this so that the notification doesn't show up on his device when he has logged out of the app so i think you know uh, that the push notification shows up only when the app is in the background so there are two methods here uh, two event handlers one when the app is in the background and one when the app is in the foreground so this is the received remote okay uh, notification uh, method uh, which executes when the app is in the foreground make sure you choose one of these methods wisely